So the Star Ferry was an important link between the Kowloon Peninsula and Hong Kong Island before the Cross Harbour Tunnel that was built in 1972. In October 1965, the government in 1965 the government of Hong Kong revealed that the Star Ferry had applied for its fare increases between 50 to 100 percent. Star Ferry, which considered this a secret, expressed dismay that the application had been made public. It was further revealed that Star Ferry had actually solicited the views of Hong Kong and Yomati Ferry on the increases sought. This sparked a public fear that if increases of fares were approved, other forms of public transportation would also raise their prices. To compete and outmatch Star Ferry, buses, trains, helicopters, planes, junks. When the Transport Advisory Committee, or the TAC, or TAC, approved Star Ferry's fare increase in March 1966, Elias Elliott, or Elias II, an urban councillor and dissenting member of the TAC, or TAC, created a petition against the fare increase and collected the signatures of 20,000 signatures and citizens. A peaceful and rational protest was conducted by two participants, however, it was severely suppressed by the Hong Kong government. The public was outraged and it was a boiling point. So the 1960s for Hong Kong was a period of mounting dissatisfaction over British rule. Living and working conditions in the general population was poor, and corruption in the officialdom was prevalent. Citizens were distrustful of the rampant corrupt police and the inequity of policing. As with the subsequent 1967 Hong Kong riots, social unrest was reaching a boiling point. On the morning of the 4th of April, So Shong Shong, a 27-year-old man who worked as a translator, began a hunger strike protest at the Star Ferry Terminal in Central District. Saw so wore on his back a jacket which upon the handwritten words read, Vipong Ellis, Jodi Jushi Yu Zun Jing Jija, or Hail Ellis, join hunger strike to block fair increase. He caught the public mood and quickly drew a crowd of supporters. On the 5th of April 1966, another young man, Lu Qi, joined So in the hunger strike. At 6.10 Hong Kong time, or 6 p.m., the Hong Kong police arrested Su Shung Chong on the charges of obstruction of a passageway. A group of young sympathizers went to the government house to petition the governor, David Trench. Let my trigger go. So that evening, over 1,000 people gathered in Sum Si Sa Stu Shi, demonstrating against Seoul's arrest and the government's support of the Star Ferry Company's increase of the fare. Demonstrators marched to Mok Ho and back again to Sumi Sa Sushi. Tushi, not Sushi. So Seoul was put on trial by the Western Magistrate Court and was sentenced to two months of imprisonment. Crowds started to gather around 8 p.m. and violence broke out among the protesters in the Kowloon about two hours later. On the busy Thought Fair Nathan Road, mobs threw stones at buses and set vehicles on fire. The Yamai Tai police station was also attacked by a crowd of over 300 people. Right police fired tear gas in response, but people continued to gather in Nathan Road, and the mob almost doubled in size once Hong Kong cinemas were closed at midnight. The rioters looted shops and attacked and set fire to public facilities, including the fire stations and power stations, and of course, the police. Riot police continued to fire tear gas into the crowds and in some cases fire their carbines at looters. So during that night, 772 tear gas canisters were open, 62 wooden shells were fired, and 62 carbine rounds, real ammunition, live ammunition, was fired. The British Army was also called into action. Soldiers fixed with bayonets, ready to patrol the streets of Kowloon, enforcing a curfew that was imposed around 1.30 a.m. So no Jackie Chan for you. Or Bruce Lee, it's 1960s. Jackie Chan is now like five years old. A few would start early at 7 p.m. and warn that any writers or anybody outside after seven without any valid reason risk being shot. But that night, writer, but that night, writers still gathered at Nathan Road near Makong. Again, vehicles were set on fire and shops were looted. Hundreds of people attempted unsuccessfully to set fire to the Yao Mai Tai and Makong police station. So during the course of the evening, 280 rounds of tear gas and 218 baton rounds were news. 
one protester was killed, four were injured, and 215 arrests were made. The next day, the government announced that the curfew would start early at 7 p.m. again and warned that any rioters risk being shot again. Same rules apply. There were obviously huge queues or waiting lines for public tra there were obviously huge queues or long waiting lines for public transportation when workers went home early and the city was like a ghost town one hour before the curfew. The next day, the government announced that the curfew would start early at 7 p.m. again and warned that any rioters risk being shot again. Same rules apply. There were obviously huge queues or waiting lines for public tra there were obviously huge queues or long waiting lines for public transportation when workers went home early and the city was like a ghost town one hour before the curfew. Some, some 3,500 police were out patrolling the streets ahead of time. Big brain. There were some incidents of stone throwing. There were some incidents of stone throwing in Chongqing Mansion and Nam Chong Street and Sam Shipol. Raised by plainclothes policemen, culminated in the arrest of 669 agitators. 69 eh? Some 300 people were brought before the courts of Hong Kong and 258 people received sentences of up to two years of imprisonment. The riots began to die down and by the 10th of April, the curfew was lifted. The fare increase was approved on the 26th of April. The damage caused was estimated to be no less than Hong Kong 20 million which is about 50 million today. Not too sure on the conversion. Comment and it will be pinned. So after the right, the colonial government, so after the right, the colonial government of David Trench set up the Kowloon Disturbance Commission of Inquiry, presided over by Justice Michael Hogan, aimed at identifying the causes, in particular, the social elements that underlined the outbreak of violence in 1966. The, the inquiry report cited that the main reason was the general lack of sense of belonging in society to young people, general insecurity and distrust of the Hong Kong government among grassroots, general insecurity and distrust of the Hong Kong government among grassroots. All of this were all of this was exacerbated by the economic recession, unemployment, the sweatshop conditions, and the housing shortage. This in right, the colonial government of David Trench set up the Kowloon Disturbances Commission of Inquiry, presided over by Justice Michael Hogan. The inquiry recommended that the Trench government, or Hong Kong government, try... The inquiry recommended that the Trench government to create a function of a district officer to improve governance by facilitating communication between the government and the local population, uh, the local public. The findings were however derided as a farce by our girl, Elias Elliot, or Elias II. So Law Key was arrested after the event, allegedly for theft. In January 1967, he was found hanged in his apartment in Nong Tak Ko. Officially, his death was recorded as a suicide, but Elias Elliot and So Chong challenged the verdict. So and a few others staged protests in Makong until April again when Saul was arrested and sentenced to Castle Peak Psychiatric Hospital for 14 days. So the 1966 riots were pretty much forgotten, but the 1966 riots, the 1966 riots marked the birth of civic activism in Hong Kong. It was the first large-scale social movement in Hong Kong with numbers, especially huge numbers, of young people in participation. It also reflected widespread social discontent and eventually was the backwater for the territory wide this time, leftist rights of 1967. The Edinburgh Place Star Ferry Pier, where the rights actually originated, were included in the controversial Central Waterfront Redevelopment Project in 2007, way after the British left. Many protesters linked their demonstration against the demolishing of the pier with Saw's action. And that is the story of the 1966 Hong Kong rats. I am hungry guys. I don't, I don't think I might lose all this but I'm hungry but learn something. On that fateful day in April 1966 on the 4th of April. May the 4th of April be with you. Wait, I don't, I don't think that's how it goes. 
And anyway guys, the 1967 riots were a bit controversial, but this is the birth of the Hong Kong civil movement. Respect for all, freedom for all. We as Hong Kongers want this and this is what we want. We do not want to change and we are forever Cantonese, not Han Chinese. And I'm banned in China. But this just shows you. If people are willing to protest for injustices, especially when you work $2 an hour and fare is now $2 an hour, you're basically working just a whole day for fear. Like, there's nothing you can get with fear. And then, like, you get four more days because you get two off days in a week, seven days a week. So you work five days a week. So you basically so you basically have four, dollar, four days of work. Um, so you're going to use that wisely because that whole, that, that fear is to get you basically to work and home for the whole week so that's eight hours and that might not even cut it might go to cut into day four so yeah if hong kongers can protest for fear which is right which is right and unless you have a trade deficit like in here where you gotta pay 350 i could understand but if you're working for squalor wages and then having to pay extra fare you have the right to demand better pay or or you get this don't don't pass the uh, the controversial fair increase act hong kong but it just shows you when humans band together we can accomplish anything even getting our fair reduce oh yeah but the bill still passed so chong chi whoa but it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day whether you win or lose you still voice your voice and let the people of the world know what is the injustices in your country or if pie has gone up by two dollars that is un-american but anyway guys it just shows you hong kong this isn't the first time and it sure won't be the last 2047 is coming up and i just pray for everyone christian muslim as you can see the um well the canon was very very uh, pro allah and um yeah it's gonna be turbulent but shit who knows if we'll be here in 2047 so one day at a time but best to secure your future because you never know if the future would happen at all all right guys tomorrow's dystopia yeah some more depressing stuff welcome back uh da -da 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 -da. i guess this is it um uh sounds pretty good um so i guess i'll see you guys too nah i'm gonna record thursday because i i thought this was gonna be like five minutes turns out it is 36 minutes but i've been talking for a minute but i think this is it so um i'll send this off for review i may edit it tonight a little bit but um we'll see what happens uh there are a couple of jokes nothing too spicy but like jackie chan bruce lee you know Hong Kong cinema, cinema greats, and uh, some stereotypical Chinese impressions, but tastefully, tastefully, for words especially, like bing bong, so, I don't know if Elias, Elias Elliot is a leftist, and I think he may be, but not so far left, he's a communist, but more of a socialist, um, so, yeah, hold on, let me just see, I don't want to be like, praise Elias, and he's a communist oh my god I, I, that would be so distasteful especially um what they're going through right now that would be like bruh bruh moment you get a bruh moment dude bruh that's not even like a bruh moment that is a xi jinping moment I tell you that is that is a bruh moment dude uh, where is Elias? Where is he? I seen him somewhere. He is bound to be here. Elias Elliot. Oh, she is a woman. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Trust me, guys. She died 102 years old. Damn. So she is a woman. And political views. Nah, she just uh, she just uh, looking out for the chiggers, man. Just looking out for the chiggers. She cool, she cool, she cool, she one of us, man. Jingo. Ooh. Low Ching Shek. 
sounds like one of Chen Kai Shek's, you know, at least siblings. Uh, siblings or child. Or I guess they just love nationalist China. I uh, don't see anything on huh? But anyway, guys, she is a woman. That's kind of cool. Probably did a lot of stuff in World War II. Um, basic Law Article Number 23 Legislation, or the Hong Kong Basic Law Article Number 23, was basically an article that she enacted to um, prohibit any acts of treason, secession, sedition, subversion against the Central People's Government, or the state of Hong Kong. But anyway though, um, didn't do much in World War II. But we did, gonna make a World War II episode, but I don't know, I'll see you later. But anyway guys, we have ramble on for so long, that is 40 minutes and I'm dedicated, but I'm not that dedicated. So when I start talking, I'm sorry, okay? But anyway guys, hope you enjoyed and the learn something of the day is going to be in Chinese traditional. Tiang and Sam O. Wait, the Cantonese, so they speak um Cantonese. <sighs> Sorry. I guess one China, one system it is. Google, Great Firewall, Enable. I guess it's kinda really I don't know, I'm kinda edging guys into the dystopian episode, but I didn't even intend it. Shows how good of a planner I am. Anyway guys, seriously, learn something. See you tomorrow. And don't start riots unless it's over the increase of that. I don't even. I'm just, I'm I'm walking on eggshells as we speak. So yeah, right with the cause, rebels with the cause, not without a cause. Don't be like um, what's his name? Eyes without a face. Eyes without a face. Um, da -da 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 -da. what's his name? Hold on, hold on. Uh, I didn't really Google it, um, but I believe it's Eyes Without a Face by Billy Joel for 100. Oh no, Billy Joel is the wrong man. Oh, Billy Idol. Close though, close. I guess we shall end this song on Eyes Without a Face. Because why the hell not? And I guess that kind of symbolizes the... Um, the totalitarian, the totalitarian nature of um, one dystopia. So we'll just go with an eyes. We'll just go with eyes without a face. The government of the British administration without a face. The Chinese Communist Party without a face. Learn something. I'm home. See ya later, nerds.